If you watched the previous build videos where I cleaned and prepped this 2.4 liter LE5 Ecotec motor, then you'll know that I was pretty much ready to drop this into the Miata's engine bay. However, before dropping off the OEM oil pan to the metal recycler, I popped off the baffle plate and found this. It's a piece of the timing chain guide that's broken clean off. So obviously that's not good, and since this motor is on an engine stand, this is the best and easiest time to perform a timing chain replacement service. And that means I had to order all the required parts, and here they are. From Rock Auto, I purchased this timing chain kit and this balance shaft chain kit. These are manufactured by Cloys, and their part numbers are in the description, as well as all the other parts. Again, I'm not sponsored, and I purchased everything with my own money. In the timing chain kit, of course, you get the chain, tensioner, oil squirter, and the three guides. And the balance shaft chain kit includes new guides, a chain, and a tensioner. We also got a new timing cover seal from Fell Pro, which includes the front crankshaft seal, which I changed already. And since we're doing the timing chain, there's no better time to replace the water pump. This is a melling unit that includes the gasket and sprocket. And if you look inside, this one has a metal impeller. Some of the cheaper units have plastic ones. So if you're gonna change your water pump, just be aware of the difference. And from a vendor in the United States called ZZ Performance, who specialize in Ecotech motors, I purchased these upgraded timing chain guide bolts, as well as this timing chain bolt. And from my local GM dealer, I purchased two new cam actuator bolts, as well as a new crankshaft pulley bolt. Full disclosure, this is the first time I'm doing this, but I did my best to research the procedure, and I'll be going slow, double checking things along the way. Double checking things along the way. And here's where I should have noticed this the first time. See this slack? It should be tight. This is something that I noticed before. There's not a lot of clearance between the crank pulley and the oil pan to slip the belt through. I'm sure it's doable with a little bit of lubricant and wiggling, but since I need to remove the crankshaft pulley anyways to access the timing cover, I'll just do that. Before we start disassembling the timing set, we wanna make sure that cylinder one is at top dead center. I'm gonna insert this into the cylinder and rotate the crank until it's where it needs to be. And now we can see that the timing mark on the intake phaser is at about the two o'clock position and about 10 o'clock on the exhaust. Now we need to remove this dipstick tube because it's blocking the timing cover. Now that the timing cover's off, we can see the timing chain and its guides. This is the one that's broken. And over here we can see the balance shaft chain, its guides and tensioner. And also notice that the crank key is at the 12 o'clock position confirming top dead center on cylinder one. Obviously this bolt's seen some damage. Now that we have the timing chain out of the way, let's remove the balance shaft guides and chain. Now that the balance shaft chain is off, let's notice on the intake sprocket, there's an arrow timing mark indicator here. And on the exhaust sprocket, there's another arrow mark here. Next up, to remove the water pump, I gotta undo stuff that I've already done. And now the disassembly is complete and we can start putting in the new stuff. Let's start with the water pump. This is the balance shaft chain and there's three colored links, one bronze and two black. The bronze one lines up with the intake sprocket arrow. The first black link lines up with the exhaust arrow. And the last black link lines up with the six o'clock position on the crank sprocket. Now let's install this upper guide with the new ZZ Performance guide bolts. The chain needs to ride between the two raised edges.
And let's just check the marks on the chain are at the appropriate timing marks here, here, and here. And now we can pull this pin. Now let's install the timing chain and we match the unique bronze colored link here with the intake actuator timing mark. Now we pass the timing chain through the chest of the motor, making sure that it goes on either side of the interior boss. And then we line it up with the intake camshaft key. This is our new torque to yield bolt. Let's just run this in finger tight. Next, let's install the timing chain tensioner guide. And now let's install the exhaust cam sprocket. The timing mark here lines up with the dark colored link on the timing chain. And notice this pin on the back of the cam sprocket, which needs to line up with the camshaft key here. Okay, that was a little bit fiddly, but we finally got the timing marks properly set on the intake and exhaust cam sprocket actuators. And down here on the crank sprocket, there is a little dot there that is the timing mark and the dark link on the chain is lined up with it. Now let's install the left hand guide and use the last of our ZZP guide bolts. Now let's install this ZZ Performance timing chain bolt. This replaces the timing chain guide bolt that went in there before and the cap that goes right here. It's all integrated into one bolt. Notice that this part goes into the timing chain guide. Here's our new timing chain tensioner. I'm gonna use a rubber handled screwdriver and press it against the timing chain tensioner. And then using a rubber mallet, I'm gonna tap it and compress it at least one eighth of an inch. And now the timing chain's tight. Now I'm gonna rotate this 720 degrees to ensure that none of the valves contact their respective pistons. So this is where things go sideways. That loose exhaust cam actuator bolt I didn't tighten enough slipped out of the camshaft notch as I turned over the rotating assembly and promptly threw everything out of time. And here's where I realized that something's not right here. Something's not right here. You'll have to forgive me in the moment I turned off the camera and had a little panic attack as I had no idea how to get the cams, balance shaft and crank back into proper time. After the requisite cursing and questioning my poor life choices, I decided to call a friend. And unsurprisingly, that friend was my racing buddy, Mark, that I keep talking about. He's super cool and understanding and he talked me through the procedure step-by-step step to retime the motor. In fact, after talking to him, I even found an online guide by DDM Works that explained the same thing because people do this all the time when building a motor. So I undid everything I'd done up to this point removing the timing chain and the balance shaft chain along with the guides and tensioners to get it back to square one. Then I rotated the crank so the key was at about the three o'clock position which moves the pistons down far enough so there's no chance of valve to piston contact. Then I adjusted the camshafts individually so the timing key notches were pointed to about five o'clock on the intake and seven o'clock on the exhaust. That got the camshafts where they needed to be when cylinder one is at top dead center. Next I rotated the crank so the key was pointing to 12 o'clock and then reinstalled the balance shaft chain, guides and tensioner using the same procedure as I did before. Then for the timing chain, I redid it, but this time when I installed the cam actuators, I made 100% sure the key on the back lined up with that camshaft notch. This required some wiggling of the camshaft to get it right. And per Mark's instructions, I tapped it gently with a rubber hammer to ensure the back of the actuator bottomed out on the shoulder of the camshaft. Then the camshaft bolt was installed quite tightly this time and the rest of the timing chain assembly went as before. Now that everything's reinstalled, let's just double check our timing marks on the balance shaft chain. We have a dark colored link lined up with this arrow on this sprocket. And over here we have a gold colored link lined up with the arrow on this sprocket. And down here we have a dark colored link lined up with the indicator on the crank sprocket that's at the six o'clock position. For the timing chain, we have this dark colored link lined up with the dot on the front crankshaft sprocket right there. Up here we have this gold colored link lined up with the diamond mark on the intake sprocket. And this dark link lined up with the diamond mark on the exhaust cam sprocket. Now let's torque these cam phaser bolts to 22 foot pounds. Now we need to add that 100 degree rotation for these torque to yield bolts. And here we are with the timing cover. Let's get the old gasket off and the new one on.
And there we have it, job done, achievement unlocked, but obviously not without its problems. And this is where having good friends you can call on to help out makes a huge difference. Thanks again to my friend Mark. And I also found a lot of really good resources online. I'll leave links in the description below if you're interested in checking those out. And now this mode is pretty much ready to go into the Miata and that's coming up in a future episode. But until then, you're awesome, I'm useless. Thanks for watching.